met on a plane recently and you asked what I did for a living, I would tell you I'm in hot water. And yes, I'm married and I have children, so I'm always in hot water. How did I get here? In the mid early 70s, I was at college and I ended up proposing an independent major on technology and society with an emphasis on energy conservation and renewable energy. I wrote the proposal for that degree in 1974 during the first oil crisis. This is what I'm interested in. I've been very fortunate in my career that basically I've gotten to work in my field of interest my entire career. So, what was I doing back then and what has it come to now? Why am I working on hot water? I've always been interested in this connection between energy and society, people and their tools. And it turns out that one of the most important connections between people and their tools is energy. There's no point in being inefficient. It's a waste of energy. It's a bad relationship between people and their tools. And so I was always interested in this question and that's why I crafted my degree the way I did. I spent seven years working in Africa in a developing nation looking at energy and renewables and efficiency. Now mind you, we're talking about cow dung and wood, not just be, you know, kilowatt hours and therms. You think we have trouble measuring stuff here. You try and measure how much cow dung is used in a day in a given home. Um, it's not so easy to do. I ended up coming back to the U.S. in the, the mid-80s and out to California in the late, nine, late 80s and worked at the Energy Commission. And my original first project was to look at the policy for energy efficiency in the state of California. And for the first time in 15 years since the Energy Commission was founded, we looked at all energy and tried to look at the sum of all things that were used in, in California so that we could make public policy based on the sum total of all energy and where it went. When I was in college, I studied this renewable energy and energy conservation stuff. And when I graduated, I couldn't figure out who'd hire me. So a good friend of mine and I started a consulting firm the day we left undergraduate school. Uh, who knew we weren't supposed to do that? We were supposed to work in a field with an employer for 20 years and then become a consultant, but we started out that way. We're in our business about a year, and we get a call from our buddy Jack. Jack calls Alan. Alan Jack's back in Canada working for the Canadian government. Alan's a mechanical engineer and into wind energy things. And Jack asks Alan, can you go to Lesotho to do wind energy research? Alan says, sure, where's Lesotho? The last time we'd taken geography, it had a different name. And we narrowed it down to two countries without having a map in the room. And this is long before the internet. And if we didn't have a, you know, a map in the, in, the, in the office, we couldn't have figured it out, right? And that was, and we didn't, but we narrowed it down to two. It was great. A year and a half later, Alan goes to Lesotho for three months of consulting. We close our consulting firm, move to another town, buy a house, settle into a career path with one of our clients. I'm there a month, Alan calls. And he says, they don't need me, they need you, can you come? My specialty is efficiency and renewables, solar, simple solar was what we worked on, not complicated wind in, in sort of comparison. And I said, sure. He says, what about your, your full-time job, your new job? He said, well, if they don't give me a leave of absence, I think I'll quit. Nine months later, I was in Lesotho for six months of consulting. I stayed seven years. I installed my first PV panel in 1979. I started a business selling them retail in 1984. Um, why that and not all the other things we worked on? Turns out that people liked the idea of being able to read at night, to run their radios and their TVs, and that couldn't do it without a generator or with candles, which are dangerous because they'd fall over and things would burn. And people wanted to have the ability to do that. So I was doing solar in the Pliocene era of PV panels. You think it's hard now. Huh. When we were in Lesotho, you remind me that there were no words for what we were selling. You think it's hard to sell stuff for which there's words. We had to make up the words. And we were able to sell it, not based on efficiency or savings, but based on the value proposition we provided. We used to have forms that people would fill out. And all of our, our published literature was in Sasutu because that's who our clients were. Um, and 
we would ask them, how many hours of light do you want a day? We didn't talk about kilowatt hours and, and ampere hours and all those other things. We talked about how many lights and how many hours for each light. And we did the math. And then we told them how much, and then they said, oh, I'll have less, because it was usually too expensive. <laughs> but we were able, with a simple PV system, to give 10 light hours a day. That was a 35 watt peak solar electric system. And a really big system would be 70 peak watts. That same panel today is almost 300 watts. So we looked at the, the public policy for California looking at all energy, transportation, indoors, buildings, industrial, you name it, we looked at it. A few years later, I went, went to work in the R&D division and helped manage R&D where we got to look at hundreds of projects, thousands of projects, and what they're trying to do to improve energy use in the state of California. 2005, I had an opportunity to work with Commissioner John Giesman as one of his advisors. And at the beginning of the year, in early January, he says, you're into hot water, I know that. We're gonna do this connection between water and energy policy report at the end of the year. I want you to be my go-to guy on that, okay? Along with another advisor, we started to hold public hearings and have meetings and try and figure out the connection between water and energy. And we had eight months for staff to do its work to come up with public policy recommendations so that the commissioners could make public policy for the state. Great. We get the water folks in the room and the energy folks in the room and they could not communicate with each other. They spoke words that everyone understood but had different meanings. And until we found a common method of communication, we couldn't actually work well together. It took three months. Thank God it only took three months. It gave us several months to finish the public policy work. We actually had most of the answers to public policy recommendations in about a month after we learned how to communicate. That chart, that box diagram and flow chart that we developed then is used worldwide to discuss the connection between water and energy. Well, hot water turns out to be about 50 times more energy intensive than cold water for urban, indoor cold water is. And if you're gonna work on a problem, you like to pick a big problem. So I work on hot water as a system in all buildings. That's how I ended up here. I teach people about better hot water system design, looking at the location of the plumbing fixtures, and bathrooms and kitchens relative to each other and to their water heater that serves them, the layout of the plumbing that connects them, capturing waste heat as water run down the, runs, runs down the drain, figuring out how to uh, remove or eliminate structural wastes and minimize behavioral wastes so that people can actually take an eight minute shower with eight minutes of water going to them. National average for showers today give a small example, is about eight minutes. And at roughly two gallons a minute, that's 16 gallons. But I'm gonna tell you that the first two minutes of an eight minute shower is waiting for the hot water to arrive at the shower and getting it sorted out in temperature. So in fact, people are only taking six minute showers, not eight minute showers. But the first quarter is going to waste. What we do in our firm is to figure out how to minimize that by better design, by better choices of equipment and appliances.